Welcome back friends. In continuation with my uh, previous session, here we are going to see about the IoT system functionalities from security perspective. What are all the 10 basic functionalities that one can identify from IoT security perspective and we will discuss about them in this session. This is my target. So where and all the security related um, updates, security related solutions can be embedded when it comes to IoT. This is the point that I'm trying to convey. So the first area that we can think about uh, the security perspective in the IoT solutions is microcontroller. Any microcontroller in the IoT system will carry a firmware. And that firmware has to be advanced to deliver the improved services for a security related or it should be consistently updated to overcome the threats. This is the first aspect of how to handle the security related stuff through a uh, or in an IoT setup. We definitely will have a microcontroller in every IoT setup. Some areas have processor. We need to have patches there. We need to have solution through the firmware. That's one area of handling it. Second, the access limitations and usage of a public network is very important and during the pairing we need more secure channels when we go to railway station when we go to bus stands where internet uh, is available as open internet through wi-fi we got to be little careful a message channel like wi-fi or zigbee or bluetooth or nfc are usually involved in the stage and we need to make sure that the channels should be more secure it's, it's another way of looking into it third point binding is the point which helps us to Configure the thing, I mean the component after pairing. The Wi-Fi SSD, SSID and the password helps us to connect to the internet. Appropriate protocol must be followed uh, while binding the user and the thing. It's very important. Please listen to the term here, binding. Binding will help you to configure the thing after pairing. Pairing happens and then the binding happens. So we need to have an appropriate protocol which can help us out while binding the user and the thing. In case of a local or a private network, the controller can link to a port and during the process, the user authentication has to be done as well. In case of local or private network, which means that it can be your LAN, it can be your private network, we will have authentication. And this is traditional. There is, there is nothing different here. This is traditional. Only after this authentication, the controller should be able to direct commands for the things to control which are present in the system. Now, if you see that here, we have got the aspects of software, OS firmware, networking, hardware, and data. These are the five different aspects of how to secure the IoT system because these are all the core components which are involved in the process and these are going to help us out in securing the IoT system. These are all the very important areas that we can really think about. So considering this in mind, these 10 points, whatever I'm going to talk and I'm talking are framed. And now, if the controller is available publicly and it is not on the private network, what do we use? We use the cloud services for the authentication. Similarly, if the controller is not also on the local network, the control of things also happens using the cloud services. So when cloud is taken into consideration, we say that it is all remote authentication process and the cloud has to relay this authentication along with the messages, whatever messages you are sending to different things present in the IoT system. So it is complex and it has to be taken care of. When I say cloud, everything happens through the cloud, everything happens in the cloud. So this is all remote authentication and the cloud holds the responsibility to relay authentication along with the messages. That's the point. And now the big data analytics on all the data collected are also processed mostly on the cloud. They further coordinate with the other cloud as well because it may be using multiple other clouds. Now, we need to be careful about how do we integrate these services and what are all the security solutions that are available at this area. Abnormal behaviors are also to be notified to the users that includes the multiple login accounts. These 10 are the points that we need to consider 
about having enhanced security in an iot environment this is very very important these 10 points whatever i remembered whatever i could recollect through multiple uh, um, documents that i studied or read we can uh, understand that these are all the areas that we can quickly concentrate on to provide a better solution now understanding the point pretty much clear about uh, what are all the areas that we can work on we need to also think about the security architecture of iot i mean iot security general security architecture whatever we are following is almost fit here but i am going to put in few words here and there for you to understand it better there are uh, four fundamental layers that are available for any security related uh, analysis and here we are no different we are having four layers here perceptual layer network layer support layer and application layer we will see about all these layers for about half a minute each and that will give you an update about and insight about what is it the perceptual layer is also recognized as recognition layer and this is at a very basic level which will gather all the necessary information with the help of the physical equipment which means the sensors and this will help to read the external world whatever are the sensors that we are using whatever are the readers or the uh, um, devices that we are using to read the environment the, to read the environmental condition is what we are talking about here this can start from the simplest of the sensors to the most complex sensor all the kinds of sensor and other equipment will come into this layer so we are going to use those equipment those components those sensors and they are used for capturing and representing the real physical world which means the data that the sensors give you are connected to this layer i have a lot of sensors i have lot of data that we read through the sensors and those data are nothing but they represent the real environment the real physical world and that is what this layer is all about so remember the first layer is called as the perceptual layer and we can also call it recognition layer second layer is going to be network layer which is equally important and we will have to see about that as well when i talk about network it is directly connected to the broadcast of data and also it is connected to the data that are collected in the previous layer previous layer is nothing but the perceptual layer where the sensors really work and they get the data and those data has to be sent to the next layer and this network layer will help us out in getting it done in a very correct way without drops in this network layer the data broadcast is trusted on numerous basic networks which would be which which could be the mobile communication network or the wireless network or satellite network or wifi or whatever so what does this layer do it is very simple it is going to provide us a dependable broadcast of data which we are going to get from the previous layer most importantly whatever the sensor gives you has to be broadcasted to the next certain level for it to be processed and yes we do it through network layer and the third layer is called as the support layer the support layer is kind of a mediator between the upper layer and the lower layer please understand this is a platform and this platform will help you in setting up a very nice application layer over and above it the support layer will help us in merging the application layer upward and the network layer downward so here we will have the grid and cloud computing are related support which are to be given because we need cloud we need grid for all the smart computing to be done and there is where the support layer will come into picture so we have the sensor data the sensor data is all collected in perceptual layer network layer helped us out in collecting those data and broadcasting it support layer will help us out in setting up the cloud and the smart computing related bridges and platform for us and then we need to go with the final layer called as application layer here is where the personalized delivery of application happens whatever application the user wants whatever the application the user is to be presented with will be taken care of from here it can be from the smart water smart transportation smart environment support smart air system whatever you want all those will be provided in this section and it can be done through a pc it can be done through a mobile it can be done through an equipment specialized for it and all those happens here 
So, whenever you talk about the security architecture, our attention has to be focused on the perceptual layer, network layer, support layer, and the application layer. And I have explained you all those clearly here. In the next session, I'll take a case study and I'll let you know how exactly to connect these four layers to that very clearly. Thank you very much for following my channel. If you have any queries, suggestions, inputs, please go ahead and type it across. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Thank you.